Hey guys, Zach from Primrose Productions Music here. Got a real quick video for you today. This video is something that I was trying to figure out how to do. I knew it was possible, but I didn't know how to do it myself. I looked all over for a video on how to do it, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So once I figured it out, I thought I would make this video to show you guys how to do it, because I think you'll find it really helpful. This is going to be all about how to convert pre-recorded drum tracks into a MIDI track. And you're probably wondering why you would want to do this. Well, the reason is if you wanted to either completely sample replace drums or to augment your drums with samples, then yeah, this will just basically give you the cleanest possible trigger for your samples as opposed to just using something like Trigger from Slate to go off of the regular drums. Now, the tool I'm going to be using today to show you how to do this is actually Slate Trigger. And yeah, there, I know there's one other plugin I know of that does this actually better than Slate Trigger does it. But uh, I already have Slate Trigger and I know that it does it, so I wasn't going to buy the new plugin when it will just take me a little bit of extra time to do it with the plugin I already have. So to start, we got this drum track here. Uh, we're going to be using the kick as an example first. So let's just listen to the whole kit. So yeah, not the best sounding drums. Uh, this is actually something I recorded, I don't know, maybe four years ago now, and I decided to go back and play with it, and yeah, I pretty much decided that I want to completely sample replace these drums. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a new MIDI track, as well as a mono auxiliary input. Okay, so we have our MIDI, we have our aux input. And now on the kick track, we're going to open up Slate Trigger. But first, let me explain to you what's going to happen. Uh, this is going to have to be done in real time. So basically, Slate Trigger lets you, if you know anything about the plugin, you know that it, when you put it on something, it basically in real time sample replaces drums as it's triggered. And you can adjust the settings to make sure that any bleed is cut out of the mic and everything. But Basically, here, let me just show you what Trigger basically does on the kick. So here's the kick track. If we open up Trigger, all right, and let's just pick a generic kick sound just for the hell of it. Kick 10, everybody loves kick 10. Yeah, so now we go back into the triggering, and we're going to play the track, and you'll see as it goes here, those are going to show up in this window here. So you can see it's showing us all of our kick hits. It's also showing a little bit of bleed in between. And basically, you want to set the sensitivity and the detail to make sure that it's picking up all the kick hits and none of the extra bleed from anything else. Uh, I think it's pretty much set there already, but let's just double check. Let's solo the kick for a second. So yeah, even on those fast kicks, you can see that it's hitting all the kicks, but it's not hitting any of the bleed. So now that it's done that, basically we're going to select a section here. So this whole section. And now we're going to focus on this little section here, the MIDI capture. Okay, so right now it says drag on track. So that's already, every time you play a section of the song, then it captures what's being played in this section here to capture MIDI. So right now we're going to clear it, okay? Then we're going to see it says empty there right now. And now we're going to play through just that section we highlighted,
Okay, so it's got all that. See, now it says drag on track again. So now we're literally just going to click and hold that, and we're going to drag that onto our MIDI track. Now, it's important to note that when you do this, it actually creates the MIDI starting at measure one. Okay, so we highlighted this section, but you see our MIDI is all the way down here. That's because when it creates the MIDI, it starts it at measure one. So you need to drag this all the way back. So if you wanted to do the whole song, you would obviously just have to play through the entire song, and it would capture all the kick hits in the whole song, and you would drag it on and put it there. So now we have this going off. You can see as this plays, you'll see the MIDI track is hitting notes. Okay, so now... Hang on, let me change the name of this. So this is Kick MIDI. This is going to be Kick Sample. All right. So now we can take Trigger 2 off of that original kick track. Okay, so now we're going to get the original kick sound. Okay, but now we can send this MIDI data to an instance of trigger on the sample bus here. Okay, so if we open, sorry, I'm in the wrong menu. So if we open trigger two on the kick sample track, then again, just open up whatever kick sound you want to be triggered. All right, and then we need to set the output of the MIDI track to the input of that plugin. Okay, so we're looking for kick sample trigger two. Let's just say channel one. Now, when we play it, we should hear both the original kick track and the kick sample that's being triggered by the MIDI hits. Hang on, it's not working. One second. In channel. Let's try that. There we go. So I had to set in the settings of Trigger 2, I had to go into settings, make sure it said MIDI channel in. I set it to channel 1. Actually, now that that's checked, I could probably just set it to any and it should still work. Make sure that this is. So yeah, it's still working. You just need to make sure that this is clicked on in the settings. But now, as you can see, we have the sample and the original kick going. So we can play the track. Then we can mix that sample into taste. Like I said, I'll probably completely replace everything. But just for now, let's see what we can do here. So there, now we're getting both the original kick track and the kick sample blended with it. Now, we're going to do this real quick for the snare and the toms, because the snare sound especially is not too great. And we have a lot of nasty cymbal bleed even with the gate. So that's another instance where it's a great thing to be able to do this. So again, we're just going to highlight this section. I've already created the MIDI snare and the snare sample tracks here. So now we're going to open up Trigger on the snare track. I just loaded another generic snare, snare 12A. You all know it. You probably hate it at this point. I'm going to hit Clear Buffer, and we're going to play through that section. Okay, so now we should be able to just drag that to the MIDI snare track. And remember, it sets it starting at measure one. So just drag that down, so now it's lined up. Okay, so now we can turn off trigger two on the snare track. 
So now we have the original snare. Okay, then we can go ahead and open up trigger two on the snare sample track. Again, choose your sound. Going really generic, washed up sounds for this one, just for quick references. Again, go into the settings, make sure that that's set on. And now we should have the original snare track with the sample. No, because I forgot to set the output of this MIDI track. I'm on top of it today, guys. I'm telling you. Anyway, we're at snare sample. Channel 1. There we go. Now, again, you could blend these together. But in this particular case, there's a lot of nasty bleed coming from the snare mic. So let's just take that out of the mix entirely. And normally I would also mix in probably a different sound in there. Uh, let's see. I like their, the chili snare. So there, that's much better than the original snare sound. Yeah, see, that's just awful. And then the other reason that this is really cool is because this, obviously, it's getting the timing of the original player, but this also allows you to adjust the velocity really easily. So if we go in here, we can open the velocity, and you'll see it's actually getting most of the velocity differences from the actual player in here, which is what gives it more of a human feel. So here, we can even tweak this. just to give it, uh, make it a little less noticeable as a sample. It's still kind of noticeable, especially because we're using really generic samples here, but yeah, it's at least a little better than just plain old sample replacement trigger two on top of the track. Now uh, I'm going to do it on toms real quick. I'll probably skip ahead because you've seen me do it, or maybe I won't. I don't know. Let's get down here to the tom track. This is really the only like real tom fill in this whole thing. Now, it's not the worst sounding toms, but they have a lot of bleed. So, again, we're just going to we already have the MIDI tracks opened up here. So, we're just going to open up trigger 2 not even going to bother setting a tone right now. I'm just going to have it capture that section. Okay. And we can drag this on there. Again, it's going to set it all the way to the beginning of the track. So we need to zoom out and move that all the way up. So it lines up. Okay, we're going to real quick capture the other tom. Just drag that same trigger plug in. Okay, good. The capture's empty. So now we'll just play that set. OK. 
Okay, then now we can drag this on there. Drag it to the beginning. All right, and then again, we'll just open up. We can close this instance of trigger on the original Tom track. Then on our sample tracks, we want to open trigger up. Browser, Toms. I usually like the Maple Toms in here. Settings, make sure MIDI's on. Okay, now set this MIDI Tom. Okay, then again on the next one. Again, going with the Maple Toms. MIDI on. All right, so now we should be able to blend these samples in with the original Tom. See that compared to just the original? It just adds a little bit of extra high-end attack. Fills it out way more. And we could also mute the original tracks and just have the samples. Which we'll probably end up doing because of all the bleed. But yeah, that's a basic overview of how to convert drums to MIDI. Again, using Trigger 2. Okay, how to convert drums to MIDI using Trigger 2. Again, there's other plugins out there that do this. There's one that definitely does it better than this, and it does it not in real time, so it's way faster. Uh, the downside of doing it with Trigger 2 is you have to play through the whole track with each individual trigger setting to capture it all, so that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. But anyway, that's a really simple way to get your MIDI tracks to trigger your samples. Hope you guys found that helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that I did or anything that I didn't cover that you want me to cover, just leave it down in the comments. I will definitely respond to that within the next day or so. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you are doing well with your music so far, but you're not getting as far as you want to, I want to encourage you to go check out my free guide. I call it Your Rise to Stardom. It goes over literally everything that you need to do to get your band from non-existent to the beginning of a promising music career. Anyway, thank you guys. i oh, sorry. You can check that out at primroseproductionsmusic.com slash guide. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.